Welcome to the Community Collective Podcast, a flip-flop agent production in collaboration with the Davison Area Chamber of Commerce. I am your host, Johnny B. Good. Welcome to a, another edition of the Community Collective Podcast. I am Travis Howe, the Executive Director of the Davison Area Chamber, and this podcast is geared towards getting people involved in our community, spreading a message of positive things that are going on. And our guest today is someone that I have really gotten to know a lot over the past several years. He's one of my good friends and friends of so many people in our community. Today we have Dave Weir. Dave, how are you today? Hey, it's a great day. I'm so glad that I am on here with you today. Thank you for that. What a great introduction too. saying I'm your friend for the last couple of years. Well, wow. I know that. Yeah. That makes my heart happy. Thanks, Travis. It, thanks. And it means a lot. Just to fill people in, Dave and I first met oh, several years ago. We played on an indoor soccer team together, <laughs> and we were both extremely I was way out too of shape old for the league. And a little too old for the league. We learned <laughs> from our mistakes and grew up a little bit. And if I remember correctly, you got us kicked out, right? Oh, no, it was not. I was the guy that was smiling, ready just to play some soccer. I think, I think we had some mutual friends that decided that this league was not for our team. <laughs> but yeah. it was great. It was a great way to meet you. And I have been very fortunate to, to work with you and run into you in so many different aspects in our community. And we'll get to that as we chat today. But one thing that I think so many people are always interested in when we have a new guest on our show, is tell us a little bit about your background, education, work experience, just things that you've enjoyed over the years. Yeah, sure. That's a great question. Thanks. So I can give you the long version or I can give you the short version. So I'll try to lay in someplace in the middle. I went to Lapeer East High School in 1997. I graduated. So it was a, a great year of excitement there at the high school. I was a soccer player. Loved soccer. If I could say soccer was my God, I did. It was just, that's what I did. And it was the third game of my senior year season that I busted my leg up pretty good. I have it on VHS tape that my leg was flopping around. And pretty much the only thing I remember with that was my friend Brian coming running over to me and saying, shh, your dad's coming, your dad's coming, shh. So I'm guessing I was saying the swears pretty good. <laughs> uh, I've been there with injuries for soccer and yes, VHS tape. If anyone could ever watch those again, right? probably see some interesting injuries or flopping around <laughs> or something from both of us. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was good. So from there, because I realized in high school, chicks dig soccer. So I really didn't know what to do with my life once I uh, busted my knee up. I was just trying to fill that void of what to do, my purpose in life. So I became a firefighter for Lapeer City. I was a volunteer firefighter, went through their fire academy for a couple of years. And uh, I really enjoyed doing that. At that same time, I became a bodyguard for the Palace of Auburn Hills. And I was able to do some security work there for the Palace of Auburn Hills. But just through all of that, it never, I never really found my purpose again, not knowing what to do. So back in 2001, 2002, somebody dared me to become a puppeteer. So think Sesame Street, Travis, think Sesame Street. <laughs> and yes. I became a professional puppeteer for a company called Puppet Productions. And I jumped on a plane and flew off to Texas and they trained me how to be a professional puppeteer and juggler. And I, through that whole process, playing soccer, chicks dig it, being a firefighter, chicks dig it, being a rent-a-cop there at the Palace of Walmart Hills, chicks dig it, becoming a puppeteer, not so much. Talk uh, about a conversation starter right there, whether it's <laughs> you talking or your puppet talking. I'm yeah, sure right. it was a great I, way to I, at least get things started. <laughs> you're right. I'd go on dates with girls and the, and we could just tell it wasn't going to work out. And she'd be like, hey, talk to the hand. I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'm a puppeteer. And so <laughs> me and my hand went off and we talked together. It was, yeah, awkward moments, but it was good. Yeah. So I was, became a professional puppeteer, juggler, traveled around 47 states, teaching and performing puppetry and juggling. And from there, I started the Not So Dangerous show. I've actually had somebody in the community ask if I would pull that show back out and do it for the community for a fundraiser. I'm thinking about it. We're working out those details. So anywhere from juggling bowling balls to fire to mouse traps and all that in between. So it was a great run. And then from that tour, I came back home. I was in 47 states teaching them for me. I don't know if I said that. I have a little ADD. So sometimes I say things multiple times. 
So I came back home and I was like, what's the purpose of my life now? And I started going to a, a Bible school. It was called Christian Ministries Institute where I became uh, really educated in the Bible, but have no degree. So I never finished, uh, which is interesting that I'm a pastor at a church here, a lead pastor at a church, and I have zero degree, just the Bible experience. Uh, I don't know if that makes me a better pastor or a worse pastor, but it, it's working here at Journey Ministries for us. Um, when I came back from tour, I met my wife. I was playing the drums for a small little church in Lapeer, and she was sitting out in the audience, winking at me, blowing kisses. It was really distracting. Uh, but I just powered through pay, playing the drums. And next thing I'm proposing to her in front of 5,000 people in, in Germany on a missions trip that we went to. And uh, we came home, got married in 2005. Now we have two amazing daughters. One goes to Central and one goes to the middle school. And we've got two dogs, a couple chickens, some ducks. Uh, yeah, it's been a good life. And I'm excited about what's coming up and the future events for us too. Yeah. Wow. Talk about a very entertaining and exciting life at times, right? Oh, it, it's been the best. 47 states I got to see. I got to see the United States. Wow. And so fun. And doing in something I love, per performing and entertaining. I'm an introverted extrovert. If I'm on stage, I love it. If I'm sitting in a crowd just by myself, I would rather be just one-on-one -on -one with that conversation. So on the stage, I love it. Off the stage, I'd rather have conversations with one-on-one -on -one people. And I think that's what makes it amazing, amazing to be in ministry work is you get to interact with so many different people on different levels. And you have a story, I think, that can relate to a lot of people. Everything from sports to firefighter to a bodyguard. And I've, I've noticed some muscles on you, so I, no, I can no. see. <laughs> it's so it was that, that Dave, I think that is what makes you great at your role, serving in a community, serving at journey ministries is that you're a people person and that's the best way to spread, as I say, God's word and the mission and just have the influence in the community and you're doing it with your family. I'm sure your daughters don't want you pulling up to school with a puppet on your hand saying, Hey, <laughs> come hop in. Let's go. Like that. Yeah, it's. I think that is what I have enjoyed so much about interacting with you and with Journey in the community is you're making it fun. You're making it exciting and interesting for all walks of life. And I think that background is cool and fun and entertaining, right? Yeah. A, a verse that hit me when I was younger, it was John 10, 10 out of the Bible, New Testament. So what it was saying is the thief came and came to steal and destroy. And Jesus was talking here. He said, but I, Jesus came to give abundant life. And once that hit me the way it hit me, I just realized to love God and to love people is abundant life. And I can live life by having a puppet on my hand or juggling torches in my other hand or running around with a bunch of kids on the soccer field or simply sitting there and talking with a, an elderly lady at, at her apartment. It's just fun to live life. And I think we lose that. We lose that hope of living life because we get so bogged down with finances and with relationship issues and just the hurts and the pains of life. Um, but as my buddy Tim Candela did, he lived life. Uh, he lived it to the fullest, even up to, the, to his deathbed. He lived life, um, which has been a really cool experience for me to see. Uh, you said reacting with people or, or uh, inter uh, interacting with people. Um, that's the thing. We, I'm running around on the soccer field with teenagers and then sitting at a deathbed the next day. Um, and I love every single moment of it. I love the happy parts. I love the valleys. And so I guess that's why I love what I do here at Journey Ministries. I get to step into people's lives, even in the good and the bad, and just walk through life with them and see what that abundant life is all about. Yeah. And, and I noticed with it too, and you hit it right there, spot on, that it's about being out there, being there for everyone, all walks of life. And it's about our community. And just bringing people together and interacting with them in a positive way, uh, no mm -hmm. matter what they're going through. And I, I think that is something I always have been excited to see what roles people play. And you're serving at Journey. You're doing everything through them. But then you also find some time to be involved with the City of Davison's Downtown Development Authority, so DDA. So tell us a little bit about that. I know you're newer to the DDA 
and their mission and goals. But kind of kind of fill us in. How long have you been part of that? And what does the DDA do? Sure. Yeah. Good question. So at Journey, I talk to our people all the time. That the the body of Christ here at Journey, the church. We talk about living life in community. So living life in the community you live in. For me, that's Davison. But we have people living life in Oxford and Lake Orion, Metamora. Uh, we had a family coming from Emily City. We have some from Swords Creek. A uh, whole bunch of people right here from Davison, Grand Blank. We have people living life in their community wherever they're living, but then also living life in the faith-based community. So we call that the local church journey ministries. And so they're living life where they live with their neighbors and then living life here in the faith-based community. And so I've been preaching that for a long time. And about na- maybe nine, 10 months ago, Mayor Tim came up to me and said, Dave, would you want to be on the DDA board? And that was a good opportunity to live out what I've been preaching, um, living life in community. Since I live here in Davison, Journey Ministries is located downtown Davison. It made sense for me to get on that DDA board and uh, try to help the best I can. So I've been there maybe, I think it's been eight or nine months, February-ish uh, is when I joined. And uh, it's been cool. It's been fun just getting to know the board members, but also to get getting to know our downtown Davison area uh, and business owners and merchants and um, it's been fun. So what I try to do for this DDA, what I'm hoping to be able to accomplish here for, for me personally, but also as a board, is to make downtown Davison a destination place where people want to come and spend time. And for us, that looks like cleaning up the sidewalks and cleaning up the buildings and um, making some um, good adjustments for downtown, but also bringing in uh, amazing business owners who love our downtown too and want to take care of their own personal space and building. Um, and then we all partner together on how we can best get people, clients into their businesses and how the business owners can take care of our city uh, of Davison. And so the DDA is my opportunity to volunteer back into our community and into saying, I'm going to live life in the community I live in, which is Davison. And I love it. We moved here. I think it's been seven years ago. We moved here from Lapeer, my wife and I and the kids. And uh, we've been loving every minute of it, being able to be in community here in Davison and serve in our Davison community area. And then, yeah, I, Dave, I love that. I love what you're doing and the mission and the goals of the DDA. Since I've, my family's always gone downtown and enjoyed the businesses and the, the events and festivals that are down there. But in, in my role as the chamber, you, I've really realized how many more businesses are down there and getting the chances to walk in there and talk to them for a few minutes and just know, hey, we appreciate you. We appreciate what you're doing in our community. And I think the DDA has that. That's what their mission is. You guys are listening to those business owners. You're showing them how much you appreciate them by even like little things, cleaning up downtown, helping make things look presentable for when Residents go down there to visit or people from out of town come down there. And I think the business owners appreciate that. And I know for you guys, when you meet, I know, I think if I remember right, you guys meet once a month. Where do you guys meet at? Where's DDA usually meet? Yeah, we meet at the, uh, the city hall there under in the, uh, in the meeting chambers once a month. Let's see. I think it's the third, uh, third Wednesday of the month Yeah, is what it is. We have a website. If you go online and, and go to the website, you'll see the the DDA website there. Just Google search Davison DDA and uh, you'll see our website. It was just all brand new. The website was just recreated. It looks really nice. I don't know who made it, but they did an amazing job at it. They did an amazing job. I know I've hopped on there. And for anyone that's listening, check out this website. It It lists every business that's downtown, any event that's coming up. But now, Dave, here's a good question for our listeners. The Downtown Development Authority Is it just for you board members or can anybody or business owners or can anyone in the community show up and listen and ask questions? Oh, yeah. In fact, we encourage community and business owners to show up. Um, That's how the DDA knows what needs to be done downtown and for your local businesses. There's grants out there that are available. um, And if we just work together with the DDA and the business owner, uh, we can find some of those grants for you. There's um, projects that we're trying to do. We just installed some... um, doggy poop bags. Uh, and we just did a window washing cleaning, yes. uh, downtown. Um, there was a crew, a volunteer crew that came through and swept up this, um, the sidewalks and picked up the leaves and, and it's fun. And I think that's part of the DDA is when we find the owners or, or the business owners or the building owners, when they start taking ownership of the downtown also, 
Uh, it can be an amazing place. It's a cute mm -hmm. little downtown. There's a lot of businesses down there, a lot of different types of businesses too, restaurants and gymnastics and dance studios and, and mm -hmm. hair salons and a lot, coin, a coin shop. Yes. Um, the bakery. Oh man. Oh man. I <laughs> just tried, listen to this, Travis. I just <laughs> tried, I, what do they call it? A, a butter yummy. I think oh. it's called a butter yummy. The thing is huge. It took me two times just to finish the thing. And it's so good. The butter oh, yummy. Oh my gosh. I tell you, every time I go by there, I sit there and stare at it. I was like, okay, I don't need to go in there, but I end up going in there. It's for the kids. It's for my kids. And then <laughs> right. I eat it in my car. Um, yeah. I haven't I'll had buy a, a dozen plus one so that I can eat the one before <laughs> I get back home. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then the newest thing with the bakery, just as an example, they're staying open later some nights selling things. Yeah. And I haven't, to be honest, I haven't been as motivated to go down there late at night, but I sit there and, oh my gosh, this is the best way to eat a treat. And no one in my family will know about it because it's just me going out late at night. But it they, is you... the, the name of the day that one time and Lucy's name was on there. My daughter, Lucy's, her, her name was on there. I brought her in and to see the smile on her face when she got a free donut. And then, of course, I bought a dozen donuts and <laughs> uh, a loaf of the um, breakfast bread, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And you do that and you have, oh, yeah, you said salons and coin shops and attorney offices and craft and clothing stores. Downtown Davidson has so much to offer everybody. It's not just a place to go and watch a parade or to just celebrate our different sports teams or marching band as they go off to a tournament or anything like that. It is. It's a we I, I feel like it's a great place and destination when you're driving to say, hey, I need to go down there and grab a quick bite to eat or get a coffee to go. Or and or just Stop in and say hi to someone. I think people will be really amazed what our downtown has to offer everybody. Absolutely, yeah. And even just walking the streets downtown at, in the evening, there's so many people that are out walking around. And what a great opportunity just to simply say hi to somebody or to give them a wave, a smile. And I've seen great conversations happening downtown just simply because people are walking around. Like I said, my goal is I want to see Davison as a destination place, not just like you said, for a parade or for a, some type of Christmas event, but people want to come and spend time down here and shop down here because it's small business owners that own most of these businesses down here. And these small business owners, they're the ones that are giving back to our soccer teams and our schools and into and back into our community. So the more we can support our downtown businesses, the better I think our community is going to be. And I've always said this and... I think I, I love this part. When you're, you shop local and support local, you're supporting your neighbors. You're supporting your friends. These are the people that you're going to bump into as you're going to the grocery store and, and catching up with them. So you're not only seeing them in their business, but you're seeing them in other places. And I think that's impactful too. Because Which is you're... sometimes awkward for me because I'll see them <laughs> and I'll be like, man, I know who this person is, but because they're out of their setting, I always see them at Big B Coffee, but then when I see them downtown, I'm like, I'm so sorry, I forgot your name. Oh my and then gosh, that's just I, a little awkward. I, I would say that is the hardest part. You start running into so many people. It is. I am a very visual person. Seeing someone, I will always recognize you and can remember something about you. But sometimes it takes me a little while to learn names. And but I do love that because it then makes me want to talk to you more because then I'll learn your name and I learn more about you and your family. And yeah, when you see them at a, a high school football game, it's mm -hmm. nice just to catch up with them outside of it. But yeah, it might take that time with you. <laughs> it takes time. And, but I love that about our community. I, people aren't afraid to just chat with you and get to know you. I've realized enough people are in that same awkward moment that when I say, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. They're like, yeah, no worries. I don't know yours either. And so <laughs> that awkward moment only lasts for uh, just a brief second. And then the conversation just kicks right back up. Talking about everything that we covered. What are some of the uh, community events that you've been part of and why do you enjoy them? Sure. Um, like I said, I, I love our community. I, I love living life in community. And so uh, the reason why I enjoy um, our community events is because that's where the people are. Um, I, I love one-on-one -on -one conversations or small group conversations. And so I get to know about their family and their kids and their sporting events and their dogs at home and everything else that's going on. So some of the events that we've helped with is, is serve our city. We've helped clean up and work around the community and areas. We've served at the schools a lot where we clean up the stadiums. Um, Journey Ministries after homecoming every year, we clean up the stadiums, the high school football stadium. 
just to, to help Mr. Beamer out there. We've done F Fleece and Thank You, a great event. We've served there. What a great event for that. But like I said, the reason why we serve and what we do here at Journey Ministries is because we love our community and we want to should be able to have those conversations of who Jesus is while we're living life in community, not in a pr pushy, pressured way, but simply because we care and we love and we want to be working within our community with you right next to you. And I think that's the amazing part. I already knew this community atmosphere um, was here and was present. But when I'm in there in the role of the chamber, I'm getting a chance to interact with different churches, different organizations, just different people. And you really do realize that people love being involved. They love when people are willing to take that time. And it's not always about being recognized. It's the small things that really influence those. And you see it as a great opportunity to, to either minister to them or just lead by example. Um, like you said, cleaning up the stadium after a football game. It's a simple thing, but it makes a big difference. And I know from the chamber side, the you all, Journey's role in Fleece and Thank You, this is our second year, partnering with you guys, and we've had some other groups start getting interested. It is the common goal of just bringing the community together for Fleece and Thank You, making fleece tie blankets for children that are in a hospital. And like I said, it's a little, it's a little action that takes 30, 40 minutes to make one. And you're making a difference in someone's life that really needs that comfort and that time to just know that people are caring about them, praying for them, and just want to be there for them, even without talking to them. And I think right, that's the absolutely. amazing thing about the Davison area is that people want to do that. People want to be <laughs> sitting there talking to you as a neighbor or going to a small business and just saying hi. Um, and I think that's the fun thing. And the thing that I know my family loves about this. I have young kids that are in school and we're trying to show them by example. I think like anybody, you, there's going to be times that are hard. There's going to be times that you struggle, um, but it is, you, you love your family, you love your community and people are there for each other. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I love because of volunteering is there's seasons of life where things are just hard, financially hard, relationships are hard, illness is hard. But when you go out and you take that focus off yourself for a little bit and you put the focus in on making a simple blanket for a child in the hospital or cleaning up the stadium or whatever that issue is or that event is, it takes the focus off yourself for a minute and it lets you just realize uh, how good life is. Um, it lets you realize that there is hope and there is joy around the world still. And when we realize that, it affects my personal life, but it also affects my family and then it affects uh, my community. It affects me as a pastor here at Journey. When I realize there's still hope, there's still good people, there's still good things happening in our community, and we just take the focus off of ourselves for a moment and realize that's taking place, wow, what an uh, amazing experience that is. It is. So now, I've been able to talk to several DDA members over this year, not only interacting with them, but on the podcast. Now, I have a really fun question to ask you, and this is okay. a hypothetical, this is a hypothetical one. If the DDA had unlimited funding, just a, a big number, and you could do any type of project in downtown Davison. Hypothetically, what would you want to focus on? What would be the first project you said, yes, this is what we're going to do with the DDA? Yeah, sure. Great question. And it is a little on the spot here because I've got big dreams. I'm a visionary and I love thinking about ideas. I, I guess the Biggest thing, the first thing that comes to my mind is a some type of a destination right downtown, a community center type event or feeling downtown. Not that just happens on Christmas parades, but it happens often or daily. An event center or community center where we can get all generations in the same room. I, one of the things that I, I think we miss as I'm 44, I'm a middle-aged guy. We miss our grandparents talking to us and I miss the kids hearing the grandparents. I don't have my grandparents anymore. So if we can get all the generations in the same room and, and our kids can hear life stories from grandpas and grandpas can see the, the excitement and energy from kids, that's a huge thing. And then if we make that a destination place where kids feel like they want to hang out, we have, uh, I don't know, a hundred kids that walk downtown or, or walk to Tropical Smoothie after school every day. What if we gave them a safe place to hang out, uh, a safe place where they can um, get drinks from Dougie's or snacks from 
the bakery there or, or something, give them a safe place where they can hang out, where they can all gather. And then you throw the kids or the, the adults, the grandparents in that mix. And how cool would that be? It, it's a destination place downtown, um, which I think is a win. It's a destination safe place for kids and for adults. But then also it brings people downtown so they can see our amazing little downtown Davidson community area. And maybe they'll start shopping and seeing the different goods that we have down here. Yeah. Oh, I love this. As a parent and as a community member, I think it'd be great. Go downtown, hang out. My school age kids, it'd be great to have a place for them to hang out and spend time downtown and just see everything that's wonderful about it. I grew up in a very small town as well, down south. And moved up to Davison area for school and got married and stay here. And I love it. It's still a place that I think people want to be here. We're a growing community. But I agree. That's a fun idea. I think it'd be an amazing investment in a community to have that type of community event center and just get anyone to come there. I know myself, I love having the opportunity to learn from the more experienced members in our community. One of my good friends over the past seven years has been Jack Abernathy. Very and good. you talk about someone that knows the history of Davison and has been part of it for years. Just to have a cup of coffee with him and just listen. I love that. And I think if we could do that for everybody. That'd be great to have a place like that. And, and I know, Dave, I am so thankful because Journey Center has become that place, I think, for a lot of people. You guys have graciously opened up your doors for the Davison Area Chamber to meet. So for anyone that's interested, we meet the Davison Chamber. The, the first Wednesday of the month, we host what we call the Community Connection Lunch. And anybody is welcome, but it's at the Journey Center in downtown Davison. It's a great location, easy to get to. And that's, Dave, that's what we really appreciate is that you guys didn't even have to think at all. When we talked to you, said, hey, we would, we would really like to maybe have you guys be at our location to meet. You said, yes, let's do this. Let's open up our doors. And it is. It, we appreciate that so much. It means a lot to myself and the Davidson Chamber. And I think the community that your door, Journey Center's doors are always open. Um, and it gets people downtown Davidson. And I think that's an important thing. Yeah, it's uh we, we love the location here. We love this building here. It's fun as you were talking about the chamber meeting here. There's multiple other groups that meet here. I was just looking at the calendar this morning for the Journey Center and every single day of the week has something, whether it's the chamber, which meets Grow Network, uh, cell phone repair from downtown Davison. They host um, computer classes here. And so uh, this next one coming up, they're actually going to show safety on the internet, which is a, a great thing. But then we have middle school youth group that meets on Thursday night, high school group that meets on Sunday morning or Sunday nights. We have uh, kids groups that meet on Tuesdays. There's Bible studies. There's um, adult groups. There's a third monkey fitness meets here. We have a soccer team that practices in the gym. Like you drive past the journey center and you think it's a small little building, but when you <laughs> get in here and a hundred people are so working around and doing stuff together, it's a pretty cool place to, to be. One, one night we had soccer practice in the gym. We had a band practicing in the big room. In the kitchen, we had a, a, um, a community group that was meeting for a, a meeting. And in the office area, we had a Bible study going on. So talk about all generations in the same room. That was a really cool night. Noisy. It's, it's loud, especially when the train goes by. But it's a fun place. And so yeah. that's what we want the, the Journey Center to be, is a community center. that they, we're, we're working towards that. We're trying to put some things into place where... Uh, this is the true community center of downtown Davison. And there's other churches doing this. I think of Davison Missionary Church with the hub and what they're doing with the fifth quarter parties. Amazing. So cool. And so if we can get all of the churches and all of the businesses and all the different people working together for giving our students and our adults a safe place to land and to uh, have conversations and to meet, how cool is that? It is. And it's the local businesses. It's the businesses downtown, but all over this community of Davison, they're all partnering with us. It's just a it's cool to live here in Davison because of that, because so many people, uh, a simple puppeteer like me who became a pastor is working hand in hand with so many other people in our community, just simply to say, we love our community. We love the people in it. Let's make it the best place to be. Yeah. So now, Dave, here's a good question. If someone was interested to learn more about Journey, how can they do that? Do you guys have a website? Do you guys have a phone number? What's the best yeah. way for people to learn about you guys? Yeah, great question. 
journeyman.org. That's our website and it shows everything that we're doing. It has a, a calendar, it has a place to connect. If you fill out a connect card and either myself or one of our staff here at Journey will contact you and would love to pray with you or hear your yay God moments. We call those the yay God moments. They're the God stories of good things that are happening here in, in Journey or in the, your life or the community. So go to journeyman.org. We also have a website pre- or a Facebook presence, Journey Ministries on Facebook. We have a YouTube channel. You can see our Sunday morning services. We actually rent Han Intermediate School for a crazy amount of money. We rent it, but we love it because we have a great partnership with the schools now. And uh, it's a community place, a non-threatening place where people can gather for a worship service on Sunday mornings. We do that at 10 a.m. All the information that you need is on journeyman.org or our Facebook page or our YouTube page. Our services are online also. So if you're not quite comfortable walking into a school building with a bunch of crazy people, you can watch online for a little bit and see what's going on, but we'd love to see you in person also. Good. Dave Weir, I, my friend, I thank you so much. Man of many talents, bodyguard, firefighter, soccer star, puppeteer, and now D-Day member and pastor. It's, right. It, what a great story, and I really appreciate you taking some time to join me on the Community Collective podcast. Yeah, Travis, I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a... It's been a great time and our friendship, it'll continue after even this podcast. I'm sure of it. That's what I'm already looking forward to running into you pretty soon. Absolutely. Okay. As I serve on the Davison Downtown Development Authority with Dave, I can assure you that his passion for this community is unrivaled. We are so fortunate to have him and Journey Ministries in downtown Davison, and I am not alone in saying that we look forward to the continued work they'll do in our community. We use this platform to keep you informed of the things happening in and around our community. We would love to interact with you and answer any questions you might have. Our email is in the show notes, and we'd love to hear your questions, concerns, and to let us know who you want to hear from on the pod. Thanks for listening and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, support locally owned and operated businesses every chance you get. Until next week, I am the Flip Flop Agent, Johnny B. Good. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Community Collective Podcast. We'll see you soon.